You are now listening to the sounds of like regardless of the hip hop factor, there was a lot of punk rock and DIY bands, a lot of shows, all ages shows. So I was inspired by that vibe, uh, which you know a lot of people. So the hardcore bands, I was buying seven inches, going to shows. The thing was, is like a lot of it was straight edge at the time, but we weren't straight edge, so we kind of had our own vibe going on. But my city was really cool for for we had a music festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, the my my town's called Guelph, by the way. It's Guelph, Ontario. We're about one hour from Toronto, so um, you know it's like one hundred fifty thousand now, maybe a hundred thousand when I grew up. Wow! But we have a, a ton of music, like they call it the city of music. So they kind of promote it that way. Um, as far as like a jazz festival and different other music festivals, indie rock, uh, like you know, just all like I've seen Arcade Fire. Like the one of one of my buddies is in Arcade Fire. Whoa. He's from oh, out wow. here, That's nice. and just tons of different indie rock bands I grew up around, like the Unicorns and just like Land of Talk and like just on and on. There's tons of artists. So I was sort of involved in that artist scene in the '90s with a lot of contemporaries, even though I was really the only one doing hip hop at the time, but. I really was inspired by my city to just pick up music. Yeah, the music city, and being that close to to, to Toronto, the uh, you probably got a lot of people when a good act comes into town. A lot of people are going to flood from the big city and come out there and come check it out. Oh hell yeah! Like I was big into raving in the '90s too, so there was just a lot of stuff going on. Like I was just inspired by the '90s hip hop mm-hmm. music in general, mixed with that DIY sensibility punk shows and then a lot of raves and like it ontario and so jungle music was huge i used to like mc jungle parties and stuff so ontario is a pretty populated like area almost comparable to california in some ways like in the density at least in our they call it the golden horse it's like everybody in canada lives in this area in ontario basically so yeah there's like a lot of different towns a lot of vibes and uh it was, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You talk. I, I like it. I like it here myself. Yeah, you've stay. Are you still in, in the same uh, place that you grew up? Yeah, I'm in Guelph. Yeah. You well, stayed. Dope. You stayed, huh? Stay true. How do you spell Guelph? It's 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 like sounds like you're puking. It's like wow. <laughs> well, you know, it's like Ralph. It's spelled a G U E L P H. Guelph. It's only yeah. Guelph. It's Guelph. It's like the queen's, the queen's uh, old like Roman, her, like the the name of like some some royals back in the day in Italy and stuff. There's like the black Guelphs and the white mm-hmm. Guelphs, and like the the Guelph nobilities and all this yeah. and that. Like it's a it's a bloodline or whatever. The queen's That's crazy bloodline. So Pretty cool. So being born in America and then growing up in Canada, was it easier to come in and out of Canada, crossing the border? Because I know a lot of people have trouble with that. Is that an <coughs> easier process for you being dual citizenship? Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question because it's absolutely worked for my benefit as awesome. like a touring artist. musician. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I just my birth certificate says born in, in Natchez, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. So like that just pretty much means I'm American. And then all my other ID I have is Canadian. So whenever I kind of cross whichever way, then I, that's kind of what I represent. However. The like in England and Canada, you can be a dual citizen, and certain countries accept it. But I found out one time I was crossing into the states, and the the the, the guard he said to me, "The United States of America does not recognize dual citizens." Really? Oh. The U.S. doesn't. That's what, the U.S. That's what he or? said. I don't know. Maybe just the terminology. I don't know, but. They probably do. I don't know, but he was crazy. He was just like, "You're either American or you're not." Right now, like oh, it was huh. crazy. Damn. You, you got you're, that. You're you got that guy. That guy yeah, was that on it on a on a mood that day. You must choose a yeah. side. So, did you do you have family in America still? Did you do a lot of traveling when you were younger, coming back uh, before you started traveling doing music? Yeah, because like uh, me and my mom, you know, we came back. My mom is from Canada. Okay. My dad is from Pittsburgh. Like uh. the, we're not really from Mississippi. I, they just met there, okay. so it's kind of crazy scattered. So my dad's from Pittsburgh. My mom's from here. So I moved back here. My dad moved to Corpus Christi, Texas. So I used to go down to Texas a lot when I was a kid, and my brother still lives in Texas. Oh, so yeah. So I used to go to South by Southwest all the time, and just you know, 
You don't really. Go to you're all over the place with that one. It's Texas, great. Mississippi to Pittsburgh. You don't Mo- really. You don't really got a Canadian yeah. accent either, though. I don't really hear like a, a, a boat, a boot, or like fucking. What else do they the say? Stere- stereotypical. You know, not, hey, I just, not like, not like my boy Epic. <laughs> yeah, I don't hear the Canadian accent. What's your start? Hey, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your early early album releases, man. Hit uh, me. Bro, uh, Plague Language, which is you know what it was originally uh, released as in '99, uh, right? <laughs> Re released as Cytoplasm Pixel, bro. That album just blew my mind. Like you came out spitting just so hard, uh, dude. Like, what was the mindset of making that album? And you know, what did you want to? you know, achieve with that album. He wanted to blow your mind. <clears throat> I mean, that yeah, was man. a banger, man. Yeah, that was my first true album because yeah. a lot of my albums I consider like my first album. Mm-hmm. Even Quicksand. Even Quicksand yeah, yeah, is Quicksand sort of my first. Dope too. And then Neo Punk. <laughs> but this one, like you did your homework if you know about this because I used to give this tape out to people on the bus. That's so dope. Like, it was my first tape, and it was on tape. And uh, the crazy thing about that album is, when it was on four track. It got sped up during the the master process, so I I sounded younger at the time, a lot younger in my early work. But it's also sped up, and so I sound like crazy hyper, high pitch, like yeah. hyper. You know, yeah, yeah. But I, I like um, that sound though. I, I like that sound of that. You know what I mean? Plus the sound of quicksand. I like those sounds. Super you know raw. I mean? yeah. Super super raw hip hop. Super like uh, like I don't know if it's under composed or underdone, yeah. but it's more. I like that gritty sound. I'm looking for that. I want to. Yeah. I want to hear that scratch in the background. I want to hear some fucking shit you're not supposed to hear. <laughs> it's so it's so old. It's crazy to think. Like I was a teenager, like 19, 20 and stuff, making all this stuff. So. It's crazy. I had a lot built up. I think, you know, it was a lot of psychedelics influenced a lot of that early work for sure. Yeah. Nice. It's very psych- psychedelic influence, you know, acid and mushrooms yes. and stuff like that. So that's a big part of it. Oh, yeah. As you've gotten older, has it, have you, have you found a, cause we're in our mid thirties, mid to late thirties. So uh, just our, I'm from my mindset from when I was 19, 20 to now is completely different. So have you found it harder to create material and write and stuff like that as you've gotten older, not having the same as much as experience you, and yeah. inspiration going on? Because, uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but my life has chilled out yeah. a lot more as I got older, you know what I mean? Wild influence is gone yeah. as much, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Um Yes and no. As far as like, I definitely am like very tame. I have my life together basically. Like, there's this level to the sobriety. Like, I've kind of been through different stages of different drugs through my whole life. Mm-hmm. And some different stages were very bad and toxic, and other stages were really good. Depends like what was going on. Now I'm I'm 44, so I'm really about being healthy keeping my mind healthy, keeping my body healthy these mm. days. Um, I took about five years off like for music. I'm really coming back to stuff right now after taking a big break to really get my head together. Mm. But at the same time, I still take acid and I'll still like, I'm still with the shits. Like I'm still pretty wild, like DMT, you know, out there with the shits. So it's, it's kind of both, but I don't really need any of that to help with my work though. So I don't get the writer's block. I don't really, I never really get the writer's block. I just, I needed to take time off uh, for my mental health, like separately, I guess. Okay. I respect that. Yeah, because you're still getting wild like that. Because that gives us hope to still get wild like that. Because we still do. We we still get wild. You got to be careful and safe about, you know, you got to. We're super unsafe. You got to. This, this, I I had uh, a homeless dude in San Francisco tell me one time. Everything in moderation except moderation. Uh, and it had me fucked up for a minute thinking, God right, damn, right. that motherfucker just dropped some weight on my shoulders. But it, as I've one. gotten older, it really makes sense. Like, it's a hard one. You can moderate the moderation, but uh, you have to kind of just regulate yourself to a limit. For us, we come on the podcast and we'll eat some mushrooms, but we're not. Back in the day, it was about taking those hero doses. Nowadays, it's all about the micro dose. <laughs> So it's been a little bit easier. Are you into that that lifestyle, the microdosing of the mushrooms? Because it has helped a lot of people yeah. um, and like war vets coming back yeah. with PTSD and shits. Yeah, yeah, big time into the microdose. Uh, 
it's uh, it's it's super beneficial. Yeah. I just think uh, it helps for neurogenesis. I think it helps my vocabulary. One of the main things I notice is that it helps my vocabulary. I'll be saying some shit like very articulate, like mm. how the hell did I say that? And I, 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 I think it's the it. microdose, to be honest. Honestly, you. I say that all the time yeah, when we're on the podcast that. and if we microdose while we're doing the podcast. We're fire. I always feel like uh, there's a lot of times when I'm not or when I'm in a sober state of mind where I kind of get that that writer's block in my head when I'm talking and I have to kind of think of the words that I'm saying. When you are microdosing, it feels like the flow is just nonstop and the words are coming perfectly and you're using words that you didn't even know that you even fucking knew. Yeah. And they're on point. Yeah. The psychedelic influences on your music, man. Uh, you know, does that come strictly from just, you know, dabbling in, in psychedelic drugs or did you like attend dead shows growing up, bro, or anything like that? Like my, me, <laughs> me, I'm going to a dead show next month to see the, you know, dead and company fucking out in the Bay Area. So well, like, yo, yo, dig this. I personally didn't ever go to a dead show. Okay. But my dad, my dad, he, he died in the 90s, my dad, rest in peace. But right, he used to live with Pigpen. Like my dad. Damn. Was a fucking hippie. He went out to the hate to the hate when he was in the sixties, and he used to go to Mardi Gras in New Orleans and throw acid like confetti down off the balcony. And like, right. yeah, like I say, he lived with Pigpen. He just he went to Woodstock. My dad was really like crazy hippie. Was with it. Like what you think? And he had a Grateful Dead shirt on every day when I was a kid. Every memory I have. So yeah, there's there's definitely that big influence, and I used to listen to the the monkey and the engineer. That's the only dead song I really yeah. know. Because when I was little, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's fucking tough. Yeah, man. when I was like a little two years old, you know. <laughs> For sure, man. Does that have a little bit of an influence on your music at all? Do you, or were you strictly like a hip hop kid growing up? I, I think like I was really influenced by psychedelic culture. Period. Yeah. So anything from Ween, like the band Ween, or whatever, just like uh, acid culture, period. So like Timothy Leary and like Terrence McKenna and like just the culture surrounding psychedelia. So that was all very influential. And I kind of combined that with hip hop in my own way, you know? Hell yeah. Earlier you were talking about uh, meeting people at Scribble Jam, uh, which was an Ohio-based battle that that had gone on for years went on, I think until like 2004, did you ever compete in scribble jam? Oh shit. Yeah, I did actually, uh, in 2002. Okay. Ooh, 2002. I'm pretty did sure Il it Mac, was 02. Did I Mac win that years. year or did I Mac went in 01 and I went in 02. I think I battled in 02 though. Okay. Well, and then also you battled in the early, early stages of King of the Dot. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because this has become a huge thing, King of the Dot, KOTD. Uh, they do huge numbers on YouTube, and they're, you know, and Organic yeah. has done a great job business wise pushing his business and the model of battle. But when we were younger, battling was about, it was freestyle. a freestyle tournament, basically, right? So you would start here. And you'd battle this guy, and then you'd end up in the finals at the end of the night. You might battle four times in a night or whatever. This is more of like a UFC fight where you know your opponent, you prepare for your opponent, and then you meet your opponent with writtens. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about because you've done both, obviously. Tell us a little bit about that trans that that transition into the written from freestyle to written kind of preparing, and then a little bit about King of the Dot in those early early years. And what process do you like better? Um. Well, shit, I, I like, the, my favorite is when you combine it. My very favorite okay. is when you combine. When you have, like, your material prepared, and then you have a freestyle and that you and you seamlessly, like, interwork that. I really like that. Um, but, yeah, like, at Scribble Jam, yeah, you're freestyling, you're going to beat. A lot of the beats might be fast. So you got to kind of, like, let this more. When you're freestyling and you're kicking on the beat, if you try to get caught out there saying a bunch of shit, you may fuck up. So you got to, like, less is more if you're going to kind of come with a clean delivery, right? Mm. So you want to let the beat breathe and drop those punch lines to kind of drop it. Um, I did pretty good at the game. I think I beat two people and made it to the final eight, maybe. 
I can't remember, but it, it was pretty cool. I beat Awkward's. Awkward's is a pretty big name. Stockton. We've had um, a shout out to Awkward's. Awkward's been on the podcast. He's, he's from homie. from the town right yeah. over from my stock tone. He's gonna laugh if he sees this because he's like, "That's all you ever talk about? How you beat me that one time way ah. back?" <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, shout out! Shout out! No shout, respect. Yeah, uh, hell yeah. Scribble um, Jam was a big. Yeah, that's a big so tournament. Totally different. Um, and then King of the Dot. It was it was pretty wild. <clears throat> who did I battle? I had battled Osa. Mm. And so Osa was somebody who we were actually kind of friends. Even though like the battle was crazy. He roasted me. He was he was hard as hell. That was a good battle. That battle got posted on World Star and Pumpkinhead did a blog about that battle. So that was pretty uh, serious entry into the King of the Dot for me. Like I won that battle and I won Battle of the Night, the whole event. Uh, that was their first event they ever had, like in indoors. Yeah, it's tough. yeah, because they were doing like small shit outdoors, and then they they decided yeah. to like bring a big crowd in indoors and have a venue and all that. It's crazy how big they they got from that on the corner to just like pay per view, huge yeah, fucking and answer. like it's just crazy. So, but uh, I battled with those guys like. I guess I did five battles because my record is actually two and three. Okay. So that's perfect record, 23, two, three. Perfect. And, and then we'll, re we'll retire right there. <laughs> Call it a day. Yeah, yeah. It's meant to yeah. be. So, man. you know, I, I lost a couple, won a couple. It is It was it was fun to do, though. I, I like battling. It's totally different. Like, it's a gladiator shit. You know, you're yeah. in the middle there, and it's a cappella. you got to project. Mm. So I like that because it's like a gladiator. Um. But yeah, they're, they're both kind of different. But I, honestly, I love both because I love to freestyle. I, I oh, I'm a freestyler yeah. by by nature, so I love freestyling. You know. Yeah, yeah. we we love like we the love true it. off the top freestyle that type. That, Hell yeah! That is just like I think a big element of that hip hop and underground hip hop in general freestyle. is that freestyle off the top improv type of shit. Being able just to rock the mic whenever and shit. And speaking of, <clears throat> speaking on all that while we're at it, you know, let me let me ask you a quick question while we're at it. How was how was it like working with the boys, the Suicide Boys? How'd that collab come about? Okay, Ruby's my um, favorite rapper, so I just want to know how you know how that went about. You know, hell yeah. Um, that was basically on the precipice, like the year when they started, they took off, because uh, they still had jobs, like at the time. Um, I hooked it up through Facebook. Like, it was Crazy. really just kind of at the time. I was working with a lot of like Southern artists, like Southern Human. If you know who my my homie Supa and Joey Bagadonis, they're from uh, Alabama. Their group's called Sorta Human. Yep. Okay. And he like he he's working with Little Ugly Man. If okay. you know Little Ugly Man, like they got a whole album and stuff. So I was working with a lot of Southern acts and just a lot of different artists and stuff. Um. And even part of that's kind of me reconnecting with my roots as like living in Texas when I was a kid and stuff. So it just kind of makes sense to my ear in some ways. <clears throat> but um, yeah, basically it was like, I did not even pay for that, that collabo. So it's crazy to think it's mind boggling because those fools are skyrocketed through the stratosphere. Yeah. Fuck you know? yeah, dude, that shit's a sick ass song too. You sound like the third member of the boys. Yeah, dude. For real. Yeah, that's funny. I was joking. I was like, that's my joke. I was like, I should have been the third Suicide Boy. Yeah. Hey, bro, that shit's <laughs> legit. Hey, whose idea was to chop and screw it? Oh, I did that myself. I, I do a lot of those mixes, actually. That's yeah. dope. That's hard as fuck, bro. That shit's hella clean. Yeah, I like to do a... Like, I might maybe drop a mixtape of all... Some of my tracks, like, you know, done yeah. up like that. I do them myself and everything, so... I just did one of, uh... Like a, a folk song. Check out my YouTube. I will. Oh, no, you no. be working with everybody. You be even working with GBC? Shit, it's crazy, man. You be, with Yon's produce a couple of your shits? Or well, how many how many uh, tracks did Yon's do for you? I probably, Yon's was like my boy. Like, I used to see him in Phoenix. Um, I've known Yon's for a minute. Like, we did probably like four, four songs. And the craziest shit is like me and Peep almost did a song too. Like That's crazy. Peep hit me up on Twitter. Peep was hella real. Shout out to Peep because That's like that, that song was mad real. He hit me up on Twitter mm -hmm. like if you ever want to do a song, and I was like hell yeah. That's and it, hard. it just never really panned out. But 
but it would have been crazy. Yeah, he's a bad crazy. motherfucker, bro. I just went and seen Tracy a couple, like, maybe like three years ago, and then that show was hard as fuck. It's just right after he passed and shit, so that show was crazy. That shit was going you, wild. Working with a lot of artists and doing a lot of collaborations, because like I talked about in the intro, you have a huge catalog of, catalog of work, and not just your solo work, but you do a lot of collabs. Do you, I've asked this question to a lot of people, would you rather uh, do the online transfer versus or do you like being in studio obviously it's nice to get the job done and <coughs> if we can get suicide boys on a track fucking we yeah. do it however we can but would you rather prefer being in studio and uh doing it that way and if so can we get the next collab to be with wicca face <laughs> i got it i got a track of wicca face you bad <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> i knew it man that's dope that's sick that is hard yeah, yeah i love yeah. wicca face um, wicca face is dope as fuck Oh yeah, he's super. He's probably one of the nicest yeah. people I've ever met in, yeah. in music. In music period, he seems so. like the nicest dude. I Hell watch yeah. his interviews when he used to be on that uh, ordinary, no, no famous or ordinary whatever. When he came on with the with the chubby dude that we used to kick it with, Sam Bergini, and they had that little podcast where they used to go thrifting, but they didn't. It was called No Ordinary People or something like that. And uh, he went on there and did an interview. It was tight as fuck. Dope, dope. Bro, yeah, Wicked Phase is cool. Nice guy, man. So that's dope. That's, you got a dope track with him too. That's awesome, man. Cool. Speaking on, yeah, that's on that's on Peacock Angel too. Same, uh, same, same record. You have to check it out. Speaking on collabs, bro. Uh, you know, you have some, you know, a good amount of shit with like Chesky and yep. fucking Soul and those guys. And I feel like your shit definitely meshed well with like Anticon and that style, especially the earlier definitely. days, bro. Like, you know, how did you go about crossing paths with Chesky and Soul and those guys? Definitely. That's like day one, basically back to 2001. It's a long time ago. Um, yeah, so um, I came up in that scene. You know, I was inspired a lot by Freestyle Fellowship, just like Chesky and Soul were. And uh, yeah, like Chesky is on. When's, we did some early tracks, I think, with Troubadour. We got a couple of rare tracks. We probably got four or five tracks, of course. And I toured, of course, Europe with Chesky, like, Actually, I, I was the one who hooked up Chesky with DJ Scientist out of Europe, which I always like to take credit for that because it's a super cool, uh, you know, meeting meeting of the minds. Because when I was out there my first time, I played Chesky's music for DJ Scientist. So, um, but yeah, like, Chesky's always been a huge influence. He's crazy talented. Um, so, Anticon, I was listening to the Dope One and Pedestrian, huge fan. So... You know, I was kind of coming up out of that scene, Scribble Jam. That was the vibe. Um, I was really into a lot of the left field alternative stuff. Most most of my old stuff is is more left field, I'd say, than my newer stuff. But um, but yeah, mad love for Anticon in that era. Like that was definitely my shit. And so actually, they picked up my first album, Neophyte Phenotype, for distribution. Damn, that's, that's awesome. That's super dope. Yeah, that's crazy. That is awesome. Coming out from yeah, a, so I guess six months distribution. That's say right. coming out here from a uh, California, you know, like I was a huge Anticon fan and been to a number of Anticon shows growing up, bro. Um, <coughs> How was definitely it? very nostalgic. Yeah, I mean, it has to be fucking crazy to you know to be even working with them. That's amazing, for sure. Do you have any like live shows coming up, man? Um, Tell anything you coming want to out, coming out of this pandemic, you know, uh, live shows are starting up again. Do you uh, you know? partake in any live shows or anything like that or are you just more about you know making music and pumping out those albums um no i i like to play live and tour and stuff uh like i say i took about five years off yeah for sure but with the, the new album i'm actually planning to try to make a little run through california arizona texas Sick. uh west coast probably seattle portland we'll see how it goes um, but yeah, I'm hoping to do 23 shows next year. Uh, this year, I'm just taking it easy, finishing up the album and the promo. Yeah. And then next year, it's on, I'm going to be everywhere. So yeah, right now, I'm dropping a new music video every single month on the 23rd of every month for 23 fucking months. Let's like go. Wow. Right. Let's go. Let's keep it rolling. Let's, let's fucking go. Let's fucking so go. The, wow. first, the first one just came out. And uh, it's on now. It's on. So, so every twenty third, we avocado. got something to look forward to, huh? That's what I like to hear. Yeah, exactly. So when exactly. you're when you're uh, booking, so I'm, booking, I'm trying to do twenty three shows. So um, you know, if y'all if y'all see me uh coming through, 
where you at? Where are you guys Cali. at? We're Northern in Cali. Northern California. We're just north of Stockton, California. Near, oh, bet. Okay. So we're we're by Sacramento. Uh, people make the stop in. So when we were young, going to hip hop shows, we'd go to Sacramento, San Fran, Sacramento, San Francisco. We'd go to the Fillmore or the Colonial in Sacramento. So those were our spots. Going and watching, watching acts. So if you come through. And you come through uh, you any one know. of these any one of these areas, you let us know. We'll come check you out for show. And we'll promote the shit for you. Just a lightweight here too. You already know, know we're going there. We're gonna do something there for you. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like a comet hits. I'll be I'll be coming on the road. Fuck let's yeah. do it. So can't wait, man. I was yeah. I was thinking like earlier, bro. 2023 next year that's like your year you know like it's your it year has to be big and then two yeah. two three twenty three like fuck you gotta <laughs> do something big nonstop. Yeah, that's like the rapper cliche. It's my year, la di da. It's super funny. So I'm going to definitely roll with that because it's hell. What the hey, fuck why it. not? That's Might good, as well. It's a good angle. It's your turn to do it. Fuck it, man. It's your turn to roll with it. Roll with that shit. Yeah, yeah. So hell it's yeah. going to be cool. The album's done, but I'm not really dropping much uh, except for the videos and stuff. So mm-hmm. everybody's going to got to wait and see. But uh, I got some really dope collabs. I got some really dope producers. I got Fresh Kills producing on here. Um, I got a member. I got I got one one of my favorite members of Wu Tang Clan is on this oh, album. Oh shit! I got a uh, I got Slug Christ on this album. This is gonna there be a go. crazy crazy album. So. You got uh, Slug Christ. Slug Christ DJ, is hard. That's tight. DJ excited. Lucas, I got a track with DJ Lucas. It's just crazy. Fucking excited. We're excited for that. Tell me a little bit about this. Uh, you, you grew up in Canada. One of the greatest sports in Canada is wrestling. Were you ever a wrestling fan when you were younger? Oh, yeah, like WWF? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you already know. Uh, well, who, was your, oh, yeah. who was your favorite wrestler growing up? He was like, not the tights guy and shit. <laughs> so that's gay. God damn. Goddamn junkyard dogs, probably. Shit. Oh, J-O-D. Damn, that's J-O-D. back in the day. Hell yeah. Jimmy Super. Maybe a Jimmy Superfly. I don't really know. Tito Santana with the figure four, man. Tito Santana yeah. was off the hook. You're, that's old school. Uh, I just thought just because yeah, Canada yeah, has yeah. a big, that, a lot of the great wrestlers, the Bret Hart's, you know, the Chris Jericho's oh. coming from Canada. So Canada, like hip hop, it, it, you know, everything translates. Like you said, Fuck if you're yeah. looking for something and something, you're going to find it. And everything translates. And I've always found a, a, a strange connection with like underground hip hop and wrestling. And a lot of that's great, crazy. a lot of great artists <laughs> and a lot of great wrestlers come from the great end, but it's like a hidden like a kind of a hidden Junk gym type of thing that you guys got going on up there. Yo, you, have you ever heard of Iron Mike Sharp? Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sacramento boy. Yeah, yeah. He, no, 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 he's from so Hamilton. He, he's Canadian. But he, I'm pretty sure he's in Sacramento now. Oh, we no shit. No I way. think so. I'm pretty sure. The, Find the this out. We got a guy looking it up. He used to wear arm brace. Yeah, yes. Who? Iron Mike Sharp. Iron Mike Sharp. Mike Sharp. Iron Mike Sharp. Yeah, he was in Sacramento. He, nah, he was out he's of from, like, Hamilton, Canada. The, now. Yeah, he's passed away in 2016. Oh, good God, Jesus R- Christ! R- 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 Iron, you know where he lives. He lives in the. He lives somewhere else. He's in peace. He's in peace. The Iron Mark Sharp. But uh, yeah, like this, Matt, there was a lot of Canadian wrestlers. I guess I, I didn't really keep up with wrestling and <laughs> shit. Like like Westside Gun, he's got the crazy interludes and all that uh-huh. shit. That's crazy. But uh, shout out wrestling, I guess. Yeah, big up. Big I up. feel like yeah. There's like I said, there's a translation. Maybe that's just me. Uh, being an old school fan and when i was a kid it was a huge part of my life and so was hip-hop and so i always found like that that translation between the two and a few people rappers that we've talked to because like you said they a lot of people do mention it in their songs and and uh a few people we've talked to have had uh that type of experience in their background only reason why i asked the question yeah yeah i guess i did go to see the diy shit too like it's cool when you go see the the really low the independent shit. shit. That shit's yeah. dope. I like that shit. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Just like hip hop, independent, the DIY shit. Yeah. Bro, what keeps you mo- yeah. what keeps you motivated now for making music? You've been in the game for a long time, and you know you're coming out with a bunch of new stuff. Like what what keeps you motivated to make music, man? I just got a lot to say in a lot of ways to say it. <laughs> <laughs> we love to hear it. <laughs> Um, it's, I don't know, it's just my lifelong passion, you know, I got a lot of different styles of music, um, that I like to mess with, and, uh, it keeps me, uh, inspired, you know, I'm a fan first, I think when you love music, it helps, because I never go dry, like, I love music, I'm inspired, I'm a fan, so, 
that's the main thing, the passion. Um, and uh, just doing it for the right reason. Yeah. That's the number one thing. Like, number one is you got to just do it for the love. That's it. Yeah. I think that, like you said, having that mindset of being a fan, you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it with that mindset of, obviously, you know, you write for yourself, but you're also writing with that mindset of a fan. Like, you know, you, you're in touch with yeah. what, what they want, show. what the people want. Uh but being a fan, tell us a little bit about what what kind of music are you listening to? What what who are you a fan of in today's music? Because for us, we always listen to old shit. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. I can't help but just to listen to old shit because all the new shit I just don't vibe with. But for a lot of rappers that we've talked to, they've they've you know underground mainstream. They fucking vibe with everything. Who who you who you listen to nowadays? What's in the car? I listen to so much new music and young artists. It's crazy. Lay it on us. Um, oh, shit. Well, a lot a lot of the new Canadian artists I like. Uh, so shout out, like, Doovie is one of my favorite young Canadian artists. Uh. His name's Doovie. Um, oh, shit. Like, on and on. Mula first. Like, there's so much stuff. I guess uh, I like, out of the States, I like Zan Man. Um... He just got signed, like, with Sauce Walker out of Texas. I like Sauce Walker. You like Peso Peso uh, and shit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Peso Peso. He just dropped a new video I got to watch tonight. He made it with Babytron out of Detroit. So Babytron is one of my favorite artists right now out of Detroit. Peso Peso drops, he's like, got... all the time. Crazy, crazy videos, yeah. like, all the time. And he's been making – he makes songs with, like, uh, 10K. Those fools from 10K. He's doing things all over now, so it's crazy. <coughs> Yeah, I'm trying to stay busy like a lot of folks do, like drop shit, boom, 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 you know? You like that Texas sound, though, huh? That Texas sound is huge right now. Oh, like, yeah. that whole sound is gigantic yeah, yeah. from, what, like Peso Peso, like with the hardest Mexican, like he does the hardest essay, and there's other fools that are out there, too. What is his name? Uh, that younger cat that got shot, and uh, now he's okay now, Got you know what I mean? Uh, what was his name? <laughs> You can, uh, fuck, I can't think of it. The Mexican kid. Uh, fuck, I can't God. think. I can't I think of it. I don't name. know. But, but hey, they're, they're, hey, they're popping out there. They got that. They got that sound down. Well, you know. But yo, before I forget, I want to add in um, uh, that one of my favorite artists is A Wax. A uh, long time, so not a young artist. He's an inspiration to me because he's my age, exactly my age. He's an old cat. But he he made his career blossom stronger and stronger. He's bigger than he ever was, yeah. and he I love his music. Um, so I gotta throw in A Wax is one of my favorite artists. So he's from uh, Pittsburgh, uh, California. Oh, yeah, right up in the Bay up Area. Up Hell yeah. Yeah, like Antioch yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, North Bay. A Wax is fucking. We're, we're right been around there. for a minute. I think he had yeah. some of his music in Mass Society back in the day. and shit. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so he he he's been killing it for the past like. Three, four years, like crazy. So, yeah, check out some of his music. Do you, it's fire. It's total fire. Do you find it hard to stay busy, or is that something that just comes natural to you? you just like a workaholic. You like working, and because uh, you, <coughs> you pump out a lot and a lot of material. Is it something that just comes natural, or you, you got that work ethic background, or is this uh, something that you have to, like, because, I mean, for me, I have to find that motivation. You know what I mean? Is that something that just comes natural to you? You like to work? It's all about the workflow. It is, I, I do think this shit is about the flow. Mm. And I, I, so I smoke a lot of weed, and that does help my workflow. But I do got to say that I used to put out way too much music that was rough. I used to put out way too much shit. And now, on all my, like, now that I'm reborn with this shit, all my new stuff, I got the filter. The filter is turned way up now. Mm. Like... I'm I'm making my stuff way more quality. So that's because I deserve it. My fans deserve it. I'm trying to give the music what it does, the attention it deserves. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the main thing. Like, I, I want to keep staying creative, but I got to make sure that it's quality. Yeah. But in the past, I didn't always do that. You hurt you know? my quality feelings. Quality over quantity. The quality hurts my feelings sometimes, though. You know, sometimes yeah. I do want the grit. You know, I'm just saying, you know. But you're not You're not true, the majority. True. You are true. the well, minority. Plenty, plenty of that. Plenty of grit. You know what plenty I mean, though. Grit. I feel like that grit's where I live. You know, I mean, I love a good quality, but I live in the grit. You know, I like that. I want well, my music to sound. Yeah, the lo fi is a spirit. You can never die. Like, that's like that log cabin lo fi. Yeah. Never, that's going to live Hell forever, yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like uh, the it's a lot easier to make quality music nowadays as well back you know in the early 2000s 
it wasn't that Shit. easy to make good music. Like nowadays, it's you know a you computer. got a MacBook and yeah. a fucking microphone, you can make a quality ass exactly. Song. Uh, so and and so to to kind of switch that form from quality or from quantity to quality, I think it's a natural transformation for a lot of artists, and especially yourself, someone that's been doing it for so long. I just feel that people only have so much attention. So like, even if the music is the quality or it's, it's I don't want to put out too much so that the music itself doesn't get the, the, sh- the, the light For that sure. it needs. The Every track needs its light to shine on it. So that's my main thing now is I just want all the stuff I put out to really be taken seriously. Um, that's the main thing, but but I still do a lot of music. Like I'm gonna drop two albums next year, two full albums. So it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Hell yeah! Can't fucking wait, bro. Occult Trill was that whole album like sl- uh, slowed up a bit, or you know, how was that album made? Yeah. Uh, that's like my Witch House project. Okay, so okay. it's like the first real Witch House hip hop mixtape like that anybody made. Yeah, you know? it's dope. Um, yeah, for most of it, there's a whole uh, a whole trilogy. There's three tapes, three full. It's all on Spotify too, but it's hard to find because it's all the characters, right? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to like to search it, but um, Sit it's down. it's all, almost all slow. There's a couple tracks regular, but it's yeah, it's all pitched pitched down. Have you ever tried your hand at producing uh, and making beats or have you just strictly stuck to the, the writing? Because sometimes people get that, especially in the DIY st- uh, stage where you're making your own shit. Some people are like, hey, I'm just going to make my own beats now. Uh, and that doesn't always work out for people. Sometimes it does. <laughs> but have you ever tried that? Have you ever dipped your, your foot into that water? Yeah, I actually did uh, maybe three songs for my new album. Uh, the nice. Wu-Tang collab I actually produce that so oh, I do produce and I used to play like in a lot of bands so like I have a folk side project I, I play a lot of instruments and I produce a lot so actually I've been producing a lot more I sent out a beat pack so hit me up y'all need some beats hit me up hey man we got some beats for the freestyle for the show yeah Fuck for the yeah. show Fuck yeah 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 uh, that that's interesting uh, what do you what what is your 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 process for making beats what do you like to use and uh beat machine keyboard where, where what's you your stand? plan of attack kind of whatever i can okay. i'm i'm one of those cats who i have limited resources and i like to make magic happen with limited resources okay but um in general i mostly just i came up using acid uh. um <laughs> so yeah mostly i use acid to put stuff together okay that that's that's the, the that's per- the combination that's of the, the process tools. that the works the, tools. the best the perfect yeah. key yeah fuck a drum board or fuck a drum machine fuck a keyboard we'll just pop some acid and yeah. then we'll figure it out from there he says most no, of the time not the program the program no, I'm just, i know i know I so know. the acid's not real it's a program i, it's thought, a program. He was, oh, I thought he was taking it's acid like he didn't even turn the program or... on the beats just started coming with <laughs> the acid it does it for you the, all of a sudden the beats were coming to him yeah yeah Y'all got a good podcast. I gotta say, y'all, y'all, y'all are super cool to talk to. I gotta thank you again. So Dude, we thank appreciate you. So much you. For having we thank you We've bro. been really blessed to for talk sure. to a lot of great people, and uh, you as being one of them, definitely. definitely. Somebody, and it's like, you know, that old saying: when you meet your idols or you meet people that you grew up uh, looking up to, usually you're disappointed. And we have not been disappointed once on this podcast, and it's been we've been really, really lucky with that. You know what I mean? Because cool. that's a that's us. A shot in the dark, you know, just, uh, hey, this guy, we like his music. Let's just talk to him and see if we can carry a conversation. It's tough to do, but we keep meeting cool dudes like you, and yep. we appreciate your time, dude. We really fucking do. You oh, make yeah. it easy. You make it easy for us to do what we do, and we appreciate you coming out here. No joke, bro. All jokes aside, you're a cool motherfucker. We appreciate you. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hey. So, I, like the, I like the name, too. You guys got a cool name. Really cool name for the, for the channel. <laughs> Thank you. Cool, Thank man. you very much. A little take on words. Hey, as we kind of wind down here. You know, where do you want, you know, the folks to check out your music and check you out, bro? What do you prefer? Do you want people to go to your band camp or check you out on Spotify or, you know, what do you, what do you want people to check you out on? Uh, yeah, I always uh, been huge on Bandcamp. I've been okay. pushing my Bandcamp for a long time. 
Um, so Bandcamp's a good spot. And uh, I put rare stuff on SoundCloud. Like if you want to hear maybe something rare, probably on SoundCloud. Yeah. And then I guess my YouTube, you got to stay glued to YouTube because on the 23rd, every month, you're going to see some wild new videos. So check it out. Hey, yeah. hey, 2020. Yeah. 2023 till infinity was hard as fuck bro that's a dope ass fucking song and video man so shout out to that classy yeah we Hell can't yeah. we can't wait every 23rd yes. of every month we're so, gonna be hearing some fire shit off that youtube subscribe to the man uh once again thank you very much well let's talk about this real quick one last question before we leave out because we just talked a little yeah, bit yeah. about you've been in the music game for a long time you started i'm sure when tapes were going out and then that transformation transition into CDs and making CDs <laughs> hand to hand sales with CDs. And now it's the digital age. Uh, wait, how, what are your feelings? Do you still, when you produce a project, do you still put produce hard copies and sell hard copies? Are you fully onto the digital? And how do you feel about like the Spotify's and the, the Pandora's and that, that type of thing? The streaming platform. The quick satisfaction. Yeah, for real. Um, I, I I'm a, I'm pro Spotify as an app, but just not as a company. Obviously, like, as a company, fuck Spotify. <laughs> yeah, you but can I, I like I like the resource how it is. It just just be set up to to benefit artists, you know. <clears throat> but um, I'm gonna drop for this album. This is a big project, so I'm going all out. I got the vinyl. The cassette, the CD, everything. Yes. So. I like that. I love that. I, I love buying. And I'll, if you do a package deal, I'll buy the fucking package straight up. Hell yeah. No, I'm, I'm really excited. The artwork is really gorgeous. Uh, my friend, uh, Mick Owls, MC Owls, Patrick uh, out of Vancouver, he did the artwork. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. We, we got the vinyl already sent in, so it should be ready you know, come, come due time. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Earlier. Also one last one, you were talking a little bit about people's attention span. And as the social media age and the attention span gets a little longer, uh, how do you feel about the song links shortening as well? You worked with suicide boys. They always put out two, and two and minute, minute song, two minutes, two minutes tracks. Songs. And when we were coming up, it was standard to have a four Three minute, to four, four minute yeah. track. How do you feel about yeah. that 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 little transition? Because it's we talk keep talking about transitions. It's because you've been in the game that long to see the transition, every stage yeah. of it. How do you feel about? Do yeah. you, are you somebody that's on that facts, like facts. like uh, attention span? And I'm gonna give them a two minute song. Or Quick you're like, fuck it, I'm still gonna drop three verses, three hooks, bridge, three three fifties. What you getting? Before you answer, I like I was telling this guy though. I was listening to a song the other day, an old school song. Who knows what it was. I look down, I'll go, man, this song's been on forever. I look down, the song had only been on for three and a half minutes. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, yeah. am I that over it? You know, am I that onto the whole quick song, move on, yeah. you know? I don't know. Yeah, I personally, like, I know exactly what y'all are talking about, first of all. Like, it's very noticeable, but I love it. I Personally, I fucking love short songs. I love them. So my new album is 23 songs, but it's under an hour. Okay, it's 23 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Hard. Yeah, so it's like 59 minutes. It's okay. just under an hour. So most of the tracks are like two minutes. I like short songs a lot. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, get to the point. Get less. Hey, well, I just I, kill, just kill and it's get punk, out. That's just punk rock. It's it's punk rock. You just yeah. two minute songs. Even back in the day, like doo-wop and some shit. Two minutes, that's it. Yeah, like, that's crazy. I never thought about punk rock. Like, I don't see punk rock as is. songs. I don't know those songs. But like that, it but, is. You know, it's, I know, it's, crazy. It's, it's defying the the normal pull, the, the no, normal flow of what everybody else does. Yeah. We're going to do something a little bit fucking different. Just kill and get out. Yeah. I like that, yeah, for but, sure. But like you say, like, it's, a, it's a, a reflection of our modern times because people, we don't, we don't have the time, the attention. So you kind of two minutes is the new three minutes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we find that on like YouTube with uh, our our streams being two hours long. Not a lot of people are look at it, but then we chop those up into clips, little two, three, four minute clips, and those get a lot of you know look looks at. So 
it's that is a reflection yeah, of so. society in itself. Mm-hmm. We sound like old motherfuckers talking like that, <laughs> but it is. But when we, we cut are. it in clips, what is it? the clips get the plays, son. I'm telling you, it is what it is. Jeez. That's true. That's facts, though. That's facts. I know it's yeah. funny though, but yeah. that's how we sound now. We sound like old motherfuckers <laughs> using the internet and shit. Yeah, well, yeah. once it's again, the clips that bring the kids in. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I gotta thank y'all, old motherfuckers, for having me on. Hell for yeah. knowing who I thank am. You. Thank you. Thank you. You know. For putting an old cat on like me, I got to thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you um, once again for spinning and staying up. I know it's a little bit later where you're at, 10 o'clock, but for old motherfuckers yeah. like us, that's bedtime. Y'all, y'all cut into my nap time, my <laughs> geezer time. <Jeez. laughs> hey, Noah23, thank you so much. Thank you Fuck yeah. not only for being cool and being a, an awesome guest and talking with us, but also for all the music and the contributions that you have put into this underground hip-hop thing that we love so much. So thank you so much for uh, doing the thing and, and continuing that for a long, long time because a lot of people – uh, stray off and so we appreciate you like every every bit oh, all yeah. of it thank you bro. awesome awesome keep keep this shit up keep it going I'll, yeah i'm gonna promote y'all channel and check out who you guys interview next so keep it up keep we it appreciate up. that and we want to have you back we can't wait to talk to you again maybe in 20 20- right, i'll be back 23 year, weeks yeah. 23 hey. weeks we'll have him on no we'll have him on on his new album on the, you know that would 23 be 23 weeks 23 weeks from now we'll talk to you soon thank uh, you again hey everybody give it up awesome. for noah 23 peace let's go yeah. all right yeah 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 hey, take it easy peace out, brother yeah. yeah yes peace